Good evening, everyone. This is Bishop Mel. We are now in a portion where we can share with you once more the Holy Word of God. So tonight, the title of the message is, Are You Living a Life of Fear? Are You Living a Life of Fear? Our text tonight came from the book of John, chapter 8, the book of Acts, chapter 18, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and the book of Psalm chapter 27. Let me just open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you once more for this opportunity and the privilege that we can come together in your presence, God. Thank you, O oh God, for your people on this prayer line that will be coming tonight, God, that you may bless them, O oh God, for your glory and for your honor, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for the Word that you impress upon my heart tonight, because in your word, O oh God, we have hope, God. We have hope in your word. So, Lord, you even said that faith comes from hearing of your word, O oh God. So help us tonight, O oh God, to study more of the word, to show ourselves approved unto you, God. A workman, a servant who never needs to be ashamed because we rightfully divide your word. And thank you, Lord, for for sustaining in establishing this ministry, the prayer line live, O oh God, for the benefit of souls who would come on this prayer line tonight, because we stand in the gap before you every night, O oh God, that we can come together and lift up others to you in prayer faithfully, interceding for them in your presence, O oh God, because we respond to your call every night to lift up every need that would come to this prayer line, God. So, Lord, I pray that you will grant us the grace, O oh God. Lord, the anointing of God, the anointing of oh God, that the word will hit its mark tonight for those who are here on this prayer line, God. So, Lord, tonight we choose, Father, to accept now this blessing, this opportunity, this privilege to come once more before your presence in this we are of night. So help us now to remember the time. Time is short. We want to redeem the time. <coughs> the time that we are here on this prayer line. May you be blessed tonight, God. Lord, oh God, and answer all our cry, all our petition, oh God, and prayer requests that has reached your throne of, gra throne of grace, power, and mercy in Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name. The title of the message again tonight is, Are You Living a Life of Fear? You know, would you consider yourself a free person? More than likely, you would say, Oh, yes, I'm a free person. But perhaps somewhere in the back of your mind, you wonder, Am I truly free? You know, everyone knows we live in a country that has a rich heritage, America. One that has freedom and liberty. But many people are not living free lives, even in this free land we call America. You know, they are bound by what? By invisible spiritual chains that prevent them from reaching their full potential. You know, this chain or this bandage or shackles are made up of fear, anxiety, and distressing emotion. You know, you know, uh, fear... Though fears hold is so strong in everyone that is affected with it, it is not greater than the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, the Savior told his disciple in the book of John, in the book of John, chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, it says here, I'm just going to read it to you. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, 
and the truth will make you free. That's in John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. So how do we break free from the bondage of fear? You know, there's only one way, and that is through faith in Christ Jesus. But before we can do this, we must come to a point where we admit that we are fighting a deadly enemy that we need help to be delivered from it. Fear. You know, there was there was a young boy, this is an illustration, there was a young boy who told his mother, he said, Mom, I'm not afraid, I want to come outside with my friends in the back, in the front yard. So his mother, you know, thought through the situation. He would be in the fence in, in, in the yard or front yard, wherever it is, backyard, and his son is within range of her hearing, or uh, every move that he would do, the mother would know. And more than likely, she would be awake if something happened. So watching to make sure he and his friend were safe in the yard. And if they needed anything, this is the mother, they could easily come inside the house, okay? And this is the scenario. This is exactly what happened somewhere around in the morning, probably 2 a.m., the mother heard the back door opening and closing. So the mother got up, grabbed her robe, and hurried downstairs to check on her son. So as the mother flipped the lights on in the kitchen, what happened? She was greeted by the, by the sight of his son and two of his best friends with sleeping bag in hand along with a, you know, crumbled bag of maybe cookies or chocolate chip cookies, sensing their embarrassment so the mother asked son what happened and uh, this is the reply of the son there's something out there mom he, he, uh, he replied I don't know what it is but it makes horrible sound and the son said we could hear it in the yard and the son said maybe it's a big dog or a wild fox or even a bear. So the mother trying not to smile at the situation and she said, uh, the mother said, son, with your friend, why don't you just sleep in the, in the sala or in the dining room and go back to the tent in the morning? And the mother said, oh, I'll make you some pancake or scrambled egg when you wake, uh, wake up in the morning. So the mood of the group, three youngsters, immediately brightened. And the mother didn't bother to mention the fact that the chances of meeting up a bear or whatever, a mad dog, were extremely low. It would never happen. Because they are in a city. So, fear. Now, fear attacks every one of us without warning like this boy. And it tempts us to believe things that will not or cannot happen. And often leave us feeling helpless and without hope. So each day... We are bombarded with situations that have the ability to stir thoughts of fear within each one of us. So, every morning, turn on the news, the daily news or whatever news, 
the times and more than likely you will hear or you will read bad news that strike panic in the heart probably like you know terrorist attack or maybe some uh, bad news or or some kind of accident or plane crashing or whatever so therefore if the fire of fear works the flame is turned up okay so from a worldly perspective the future may look pretty bleak especially if your situation is apart from faith in Jesus Christ so the fact is if you do this Fear will reach out and control your heart or grab your heart, telling you that the worst will happen. It will be beyond anything you can imagine. So, warning is that don't buy into the enemy's lies. You know, every night or the nightly news don't give you a complete picture of reality. The ex they exaggerate it. Even the news on the television, they would say there will be blizzard, but there's only few raindrops. So it will give you complete, uh, uh, they don't give you a complete picture of reality. So, and remember, nothing the devil whispered to you is based on the truth of God's word. So while we are facing very serious time in this nation, nation history, we are not alone. God is with us, and He is never out of control. God is always in control of every situation, of every event in this nation, in every nation of the world. He is in control. That's why Apostle Paul discovered that this is in, in a fresh way during a very difficult time in his ministries. Remember, Apostle Paul, somewhere near the end of his second missionary journey, he was staying in the city of Corinth. If you remember, if you're a student of the Bible, he had left Athens to go to Macedonia because that the angel told him to go to Macedonia. But something happened that almost caused him to stumble in his faith. What happened here? In the book of Acts, chapter 18, verses 5 to 6, here the Jews resisted the teaching of Apostle Paul to a point where they would they blaspheme God. They don't believe in God. They ridicule God. So Paul was fed up with their stiff neck ways. So he declared that he would no longer go to the Jews first, but instead would preach God's message to the Gentiles. That's why we are saved, because instead of ministering to his own people, his message now is upon the Gentiles. And we are the Gentiles before we got saved. So at every turn, Apostle Paul faced opposition from the Jewish people, or I mean Jewish leaders. That's why on several occasions, his very life had been threatened. Remember, he was even stoned, stoned by the children of Israel, or by the people. And he was tired and likely felt alone and worn thin emotionally. His emotion was so thin. Vulnerable, vulnerable to the destruction of what? Of fear. He was so fearful. But one night, one night, as he drifted up to sleep, God Spirit, uh, God Spirit spoke to him. If you want to go to the book of Acts chapter 18 verse 9. What did God told Apostle Paul in his uh, dream, probably sleeping? And in, in, in Acts chapter 18, verse 9 to 10, it says here, Do not be 
afraid any longer, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no man will attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in this city. So there we have it. One of the greatest apostles who ever lived is fighting or battling fear. But the verses that follow do not mention this again. Why? Paul changed his focus. His eyes now is fix, fixed on Jesus. He came face to face with the reality of his fear and choose to co to confront it. He confronted his fear. It was, you know, something he could do, he could not do on his own. So he ha he confronted it through the help of God. There was no way he could move fast. The fear he felt without the assurance, without the Lord Jesus Christ's help. So once God's Spirit spoke to his heart, now the issue was settled. Paul knew there was only one thing for him to do. Complete the work of God that he was called for. He was called for to preach the gospel. So the enemy, Satan, the devil uses many things in an effort to distract you and me and prevent us from reaching our full potential. He would uh, give you the spirit of fear. And fear is one of his best weapons. Fear is one of, of legal entry of the devil to come into your life without you knowing it. He can come to you if you allow it. But Paul confronted that spirit of fear. So he he usually follow it with words of of uh, comfort. That's why, and, and that was the strategy. That was his strategy strategy in Corinth. That's why he uh, he wrote the book of Corinthians because he knows Satan knew he would face ultimate defeat if Paul succeeded to keep his spirit out of fear. Here we could see that the Lord faithful promise to him was accomplished. Faithful promise of the Lord upon him was accomplished that he would not leave him, he would not forsake him. So what are the right steps to overcome fear? If you are in have the spirit of fear now, how what are your what are the steps that you can overcome fear? Fear of what? Fear of losing job. Fear of your husband going to uh, have some affair with another person. Fear that you will have an accident. Fear. All this kind of fear. So how would you, uh, what are the steps that you can overcome fear in your life? Number one, if you are going to overcome fear, the first step is to acknowledge and admit your fear. Admit it. But you confess. Confess something like this. You would say, Lord, I feel fearful and I don't know what to do. Please show me how to go forward from this point. God will show you. Show you the way that you should go if you have faith in God. Number two, ask God to enable you to con conquer your fear. You know, the more you understand your relationship with God, the more intimately you will relate to Him what you are going through. He would understand what you are going through. That's why he, 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 Paul, that's why Paul in the book of Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 Paul wrote an interesting word of instruction to Timothy. He reminded his his follower, Timothy, 
And he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but power and love and what? Discipline. That's what the what that's what uh, advice of Apostle Paul to Timothy. Fear doesn't fit who we are as believers. It usually surfaces when we have the wrong response and allow allow it in times of trial. So God wants you to be victorious and not harassed by fear or anxiety. That's why let God let God remove fear from your life. That's what's the advice of Apostle Paul to Timothy. That he has not given you a spirit of fear, but love, power. So here we could see now that he may, that he may choose to do this by placing you in a frightening situation where you feel out of control. That's what the ways of the devil. But you do not have to worry because the one who has promised never, never to let you go is holding your life in his hand. You are in the hands of God. You don't need to fear. You don't have to worry. He is in your hand. You are in his hand. So after you have given your worries to the Lord, Surrender it to Him. If you have fear, give it to the Lord and leave it there. Don't take it back. Meditate on His Word daily. David understood the power that was available to him through God's personal promises. That's why in the book of Psalm 27 verses 1 to 3, he wrote, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? My adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host come against me, my heart will not fear. That's why if you want to keep your confidence strong, your trust, your faith, Study the Word of God daily. Go through the Word of God daily, not only on Sunday. Apply, apply God's principle. Apply, apply God's scripture or Word of God. Apply it to your life and walk with Him each day by faith. When you hide His Word in your heart, you will have the light of His truth to guide you. Daily, not only for your present circumstances, but also for eternity. So what right choices should you make in time of fear, in time of anxiety? You can choose to believe that God is sovereign over all. He is in control of your life. Whatever situation you are going through, whether you lost your job, whether you lost your, your status in life. If you remember the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6, Job was selected to become an example of righteousness. And through whom the Lord would display His faithfulness. Doesn't He have the right to do that in your life? God has the right to do that in your life. He would accomplish what He wants to accomplish in your life. So that you would not have fear in any situation. Choose to believe that because God is in control, He will assure you of victory in every situation of your life. You have to trust Him in your hardship. You have to trust Him in your hopelessness. You have to trust Him in your helplessness. When everything is going dark, you have to trust Him. Because He understands your situation and believes that He will bring something. 
valuable out of your fear. You know, God can produce, He can produce good from even the worst situation in your life that gives you fear. Instead of dwelling on your fear, focus on blessing. Focus on the things that God is doing to you. Count all your blessing for which you should be grateful every day of your life. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your sorrow. Don't waste, waste your fear. Rather, learn something to better yourself and also help others. That's the purpose. That's why, that's why God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, so that you can help others. Meditate on the scripture rather than feed on the pity others have for you. The best, per the best person to turn to in, in time of fear is not your neighbor or your best friend, even not your wife or husband, even your close friend. It's the Lord that you have to turn to. God doesn't deny your fear your anxiety, even your pain. He wants us to turn to Him for what? For healing. Heal you of your fear, your anxiety. So when we trust the Lord and walk in the center of His will, we will be blessed mightily if you make the right choices in the midst of your fear or situation. Your Heavenly Father will see you true because that is his promise i will never leave you nor forsake you for his glory for his honor in jesus in jesus precious precious holy name and this is the end of our sharing tonight and we give you praise lord we give you glory tonight oh god lord what you have been doing in our life we appreciate it, Lord, for your glory, for your honor. We are here tonight to give you praise, to give you glory, O oh God, because you promise you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that you are the light in our salvation. We shall not be afraid. You are the strength of our life. For whom we shall, uh, whom shall we be afraid? Lord, we will, be we will not be afraid of sudden fear. Lord, you have given us peace. And you have told us, don't let your heart be troubled and don't let your heart be afraid. Thank you, God, for the gift of peace through your son, Jesus. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and sound mind. We have not received the spirit of even the bondage against 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 fear. Thank you, God, for making us, Lord, your children. There's no fear in your love, Father. Your perfect love casts out all fear in our life. Thank you, God, for delivering us from the torment of fear or anxiety, God. Fill us now tonight with your love as we receive it by faith in your promise. So, Lord, tonight you become a refuge. You even our strength, God, a very present help in trouble in times of fear, God. So it is good to know tonight that we have no need to fear because you are our God. We will be glad and rejoice for you, Father. We will do good things in our lives starting today because we don't have fear and we rely on your promise, O oh God, that, we will, that you will never leave us nor forsake us even to the end of the world. In Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name. Hallelujah.